Hello. Um, hi. I am feeling weird giving a virtual talk. Uh, I guess I guess everybody's doing that these days, though. Um, my name is Ryan. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, this project, Dino, uh, that I've been working on for the last two years now or so. Um, we have just released version 1.0 about a month ago. And yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys a bit of an overview about it uh, and some demos. And uh, if I understand the program correctly, hopefully you can ask me some questions at the end of it. Um, so first off, just a, just a bit of an overview. Um, so C++ and Rust and Go are really interesting developments in in computer infrastructure. They're, they're allowing us to uh, more easily uh, make machine code programs uh, and it's getting better all of the time. But the fact remains that most software is uh, not CPU bound and it seems that most software is, is done in dynamic languages like Python and Ruby and JavaScript. Uh, these dynamic languages, aka scripts, are easy and succinct and they often are uh, the most minimal way to describe certain algorithms. Uh, and amongst these, these uh, dynamic languages, uh, JavaScript is, is arguably the fastest and has the largest community of programmers because it's the language of the web browser. Um, so with that in mind, uh, back in, in 2009, uh, I started the Node project to bring uh, JavaScript to, to the server, um, or out of the web browser, that is. Um, and this turned out to be a really successful project. Uh, it's essentially turned into the PHPs of the 2010s and uh, has ubiquitous cloud support and is used by uh, essentially all front-end frameworks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, in, in some way or another, essentially every website is using Node. Um, but since 2009, uh, the JavaScript ecosystem has, has improved uh, very rapidly uh, and has new features and systems that uh, were not around back then. Um, so for example, the array buffer uh, is a system to allow uh, accessing raw binary data in JavaScript. That was not there when, when we originally designed the, the TCP system in, in Node. Um, async await, of course, is, is uh, amazingly useful when you're dealing with asynchronous systems. And most importantly, the, the ES modules has, has uh, provided a way to uh, provide a module system, a standard module system in, in JavaScript. <coughs> Um, and so Dino uh, is, is built uh, trying to take, take advantage of, of these uh, new developments. Um, so in, in many ways, it's, it's very similar to Node. Uh, you know, it's, it's a program for executing JavaScript outside of the web browser, and it's built on top of uh, the V8 JavaScript VM inside of Chrome. Uh, and it's open source and MIT licensed. Uh, but instead of C++, it's written in Rust. And yeah, kind of the, the, a, lot, a lot of the utilities that it provides are, are quite different. So it has built-in dev tools for testing and linting and formatting and doc generation. Uh, and it's been designed so that it can be embedded in other software. And uh, it tries to use web APIs where it can um, with the idea that we want to 
we want this thing to be as broadly usable as possible. So we really want to uh, to kind of uh, appeal to to developers. Uh, you know, I, I think the the web browser is is kind of the largest developer base, uh, and by using those APIs, we we can appeal to the largest segment of the developer population. <coughs> um, so Dino is a bit different in that uh, you know it's it's making use of of these ES modules, um, and it has this this weird property where you can actually put a raw HTTP URL into as give 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 a raw HTTP URL as as the uh, module specifier in import statements. Uh, this is actually something that's that's possible in uh, web browsers these days. Um, so it's it's a web compatible uh, uh, system, um, and what this allows you to do is is basically import code directly from the internet. Um, and yeah, this this has some uh, some interesting properties. Um, so you know w when you talk about importing code directly from the internet, uh, you quickly run into into kind of some security questions, right? How, how do you know that, you know, if you're just pulling from, from a random uh, URL, I mean, what, what sort of trust can you have from that? Um, well, I mean, you know, you're, if, you're, if you're pulling from a random NPM package, what sort of trust can you have from it either, right? Not, not much. Uh, but you know this this kind of makes the the fact that you're pulling random code from the internet a bit more explicit. Uh, not that you're not doing that already in, in with uh, you know Ruby gems or npm packages. Uh, you're you're certainly still pulling random code from the internet. Um, but because this makes it more explicit, uh, you know we we think that uh, uh, it's uh, important to. Uh, to make use of, of the fact that V8 is a secure sandbox. Uh, and so, so Dino, by default, uh, also retains this security sandbox uh, of V8s. And so, uh, well, let me, let me jump into some demos and, and you'll see what I mean. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, oops, I need to copy and paste this. So what I'm going to do first is, uh, show a gist program. Gist is this uh, GitHub pasting server. Um, and essentially it's, it's a, um, uh, a way to, to paste code on the internet. And there's an API where you can, you can basically post, post a file and then send get, a, get a URL and, and send it to people. Um, and so we've got this program uh, and this program is a, is a is a URL to a TypeScript file. And if I enter it in my browser, uh, we've got this website where it, it displays the code. Um, and uh, the interesting thing here is, is that, you know, when you display it on, get it through the web browser, you get this, this, uh, this website, but if you curl it, uh, you actually get the raw, raw text. Um, and the, the way that we're doing this is, is through, uh, the accept header, right? So, so web browsers can send an accept header with with each request that says, "Oh, I I want uh, HTML," um, and based on that, we're we're able to either serve up the raw content, the the raw text file, or or not. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is Dino has the ability to to download this program directly uh, and uh, run it. And so what, what, the way that this program works, uh, if I just run it, uh, I'm going to get some permission error. Uh, it says uncaught, permission denied, uh, access to environmental variables. Run again with the allow M flag. So just in order to, to paste a gist, uh, and if you look through the code, you'll, you'll see that uh, that it's trying to get this environmental variable gist token so that it knows how to which user to, to post as on on gist. Um, 
So, you know, we don't just allow anybody to have access to environmental variables. We have to give it the allow m flag. And, you know, it's, it's going to also need to have allow net because it's going to be accessing some server. But let, yeah, let's, let's just see that happen. Um, so, right, when we, when we run it, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's fetched my, my secret uh, gist token uh, environmental variable and now what we need to it's it's giving me this usage uh, message because I haven't actually given it a file to uh, to upload and so what I'm going to do is try to uh, upload this this readme file that's in my current directory uh, to the gist server and when I run this I should get one more error which is that oh it doesn't have uh, read access to the file system uh, actually two more errors so we're going to have to give it dash dash allow read and uh, just skipping ahead we have to give it allow net as well because it's going to, to access uh, gist.github.com um, and when I run this it says oh success it's, it's uh, taken this file and given me some URL which if I go to it uh, hopefully will contain this this Dino readme file right so this is Kind of, I, I think the interesting thing about this is is that I, I didn't need to install anything, right? This is a command line utility um, that you know previously you might have npm installed dash g to to kind of get this this program, um, but here I'm I'm running it without uh, without installing anything. Uh, now we do have kind of an install version. Um, and the way this works uh, is that if I, uh, I, I think if I, so I'm taking out the, the readme because, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is, is instead of say deno run, I'm going to say deno install. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to uh, create a little shell script. Oh. It's, it's erroring out because I've already got it installed. I'm going to have to do dash dash force to overwrite my previous uh, installation of, of Dino Gist. So it, it's created this little shell script. And if I cat this shell script, I mean, essentially, it's just copy and pasted this, this command line in, into this shell script, right? Um, and so, so now, now I can do things like uh, just read me and uh, it, it will work like that. So we, we have this very simple way to essentially create bookmarks to, to command line scripts. Um, right, so, so this is kind of what I mean by, by a web browser for, for command line utilities or even programs in general. Um, this next example um, is, is a whole website actually. Um, so when I run this, I think this is running a whole React website. So, you know, obviously this gist program is, is pretty small, but uh, the claim here is that we can do kind of arbitrary complexity here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is Dino run, allow net, allow read, and uh, let's, let's just take a look at what this, what this uh, program is. Um, you know, it has some, some relative includes. It's, it's including a or importing a, a TSX file, um, starting some sort of server, um, etc. Uh, and it's I guess it's going to be listening on on port three thousand. Um, when I run this, uh, hopefully it will work. Let's see, listening on port three thousand seems to have done it. Uh, and let's go there. It says hello Dino Land, Dino Land, and has kind of this example React server. Um, you might have noticed that this started up really fast and there wasn't any downloading or anything happening. Uh, that's because this, this file here is, is cached to my local, my local machine. Um, and you can find out more about the cache information if you type Dino info. Whoops, <laughs> that was a lot of output. So when I type Dino info with, with kind of the, the entry point script, um, I, I can find out that uh, it has kind of a locally cached version in, in this directory. 
uh, and this is a TypeScript program, and so it's it's been automatically compiled to JavaScript, and it exists in in this location here. Um, and here's a source map file, and then it even gives us a dependency tree, uh, all with all with valid URLs. And so so this entry point depends on mod tsx, which in turn depends on dep.ts which in turn depends on React from JSPM, and so on, right? There's, there's a lot of dependencies in here. Um, so yeah, uh, just, just kind of as an example of, of a more complicated program. Um, so where's my slides, right? So even something more complicated here um, is this program, which is also given as, as a URL, and, and I might as well uh, show you the source code first. Um, so this is also displaying a little website, but it's using this, this web view. Um, and as you'll see, it's, it's kind of a little mini GUI application. Um, and it's going to create two windows, a uh, really, really simple thing, um, with, uh, but two, two uh, native windows, right? And the way that it does this is with, uh, with Dino's plugin interface, which is still unstable, but essentially allows you to plug into, essentially allows you to load a, a DLL of, of, uh, that kind of can contain arbitrary native code. Um, and yeah, so that, that's why we need this unstable. And just FYI, this dash capital A just means opt out of all of this security sandbox nonsense. Let's just, let's just run it. Let's, let's, let's be crazy. By the way, if, if you're loading a DLL, uh, a plugin, as we call them, uh, you know, kind of all your security bets are off because we, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, if, if you're going into some, some random rust code, we, we, we can't control what, what you're doing at that point. Um, so, you know, the, uh, uh, Oh, okay. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to run this, and as you see, it's it's created these these two windows here. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'll you know I'll, I'll I'll leave this for you to play around with, but just just kind of uh, a sampling of of what Dino can do. Um, and yeah, I, I mentioned earlier that we have a bunch of tooling. So let me do Dino help, and you'll see that we've got all these subcommands. Um, so we have like bundling and doc and format and install and lint. So, you know, let me, let me just give you an example here of let's say that gist file, um, or let, let's, let's take this, this entry point.ts. Hopefully this works. I haven't tried this yet, but let's, let's just try to bundle, bundle this guy, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to, to create a single JavaScript file with, with all of the dependencies bundled up in, in here. Um, really crossing my fingers now that this actually works. <clears throat> uh, maybe seem it, it, it outputs it to, to standard out. Um, so yeah, seems seems to have worked. Um, I'd rather show you these other tools uh, since bundling exists. Uh, let me let me show you format. So. So Dino format is, is essentially our version of prettier, but implemented in Rust and so much faster. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just format some files. I've got this directory here. I'm actually in the Dino directory. And this is some code that's kind of built into Dino. We, in, in Dino itself, in our internal stuff, we actually don't use this Dino format yet. We, we use uh, prettier uh, still. Although hopefully we'll be changing this this soon, uh, but uh, I'm just going to use this as an example of, of formatting a bunch of code, right? Uh, and uh, giving you a sense of of how long it runs. This is this is uh, yeah runs like that. I guess not not dissimilar to not dissimilar to, to prettier. And if I do a get diff. Uh, it's not exactly the same as prettier, but it's pretty close. Um, seems seems like uh, Dino format likes trailing commas, right? Uh, whereas whereas prettier our prettier current prettier situation does not. So um, let me reset that. 
uh, Dino Doc uh, is oh, too fast, too fast. Uh, Dino Doc. Uh, okay, so first of all, here's here's uh, some some server, <laughs> some some code. This is our HTTP server, so you can you can throw this in the web browser and, and see the code here. Uh, what we have is a uh, we're we're able to parse the AST and and kind of display documentation. And so if you type Dino Doc and give a URL or a, a relative path to some local source code. Uh, we will print out a bunch of uh, documentation for this. So we, we can par parse out the, the JS doc comments and uh, the TypeScript types and, and kind of display them. And uh, you know you can kind of narrow in on some of this stuff. So maybe if you want to learn more about server requests, you, you give that as another argument and you can, you can kind of see, see some more of it. Um, and of course, we have um, JSON output. So if you want to have kind of do a structured uh, display of this, and I think this doesn't work with the second argument. So I think I need to do that right. So if I if I give this JSON argument here, then we get the same output that was displayed previously, but but in kind of a computer readable form. And what's cool about this is that. We've actually uh, taken this and built a website around it. And so in the uh, Dino uh, uh, website here, if you, if you go to one of these, these source code links and click View Documentation, uh, we'll actually render out that JSON into, into a file, into a um, documentation that, that you can view online. Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially any, any URL, yeah, and, and by the way, if you go to, uh, Dino doc and you can put in any any random URL here right uh, including things that are not on Dino land and it should be able to uh, generate documentation for for that uh, for that URL um, so one more thing Dino lint this has just now come out uh, and this is essentially our version of um, our version of, of ESLint, um, it's unstable still, so you have to provide that unstable flag. But if I give it a directory of source code, which I'm going to give this CLI test unit, this is a bunch of source code uh, that has not been linted yet, uh, you will see that it runs very fast. Um, our our Dino Lint program, you know, is is not fe does not yet have feature parity with with. Uh, with ESLint, but we're making fast progress with this, and uh, we've clocked it in at about uh, two orders of magnitude faster than ESLint. Um, so do check this out, and I should mention that Dino Lint is uh, distributed as a standalone Rust crate that is potentially usable inside, uh, outside of Dino itself, and so so potentially this could be used uh, for other um, for node projects. Um, so not, not necessarily Dinos specific. All right, so I'm not going quite slow here. Got to speed it up. Um, right, so I should mention that, you know, we, we've, we've uh, designed this, this thing a bit differently than Node. Node is kind of this monolithic uh, command line application. Dino is not. Dino is a set of crates, and we've uh, built it this way because we've seen that there's there's uh, certain use cases where you might want to execute some JavaScript, but not necessarily spin up a whole node process, right? And and you know all of the things that come with that, install npm packages and whatnot. So uh, for example, databases uh, often use JavaScript for MapReduce functions or serverless products like uh, Cloudflare workers might want to execute some JavaScript on every incoming request, or say Electron-style GUI applications, uh, where where uh, like VS Code, where where you just need to you need some programmability, but you don't necessarily want uh, the whole uh, Dino executable. Uh, so with that, we've we've provided this uh, Dino Core Crate, which is a a very much trimmed down API of of the Dino executable, uh, and so I encourage you to look at that. Dino Core actually depends on an even lower level crate, which is called Rusty V8. This is our wrapper around V8 that is uh, relatively safe. 
Uh, I'm not going to, it's, it's not 1.0 yet, so I'm not going to say that it's, it's a, a completely safe uh, API, but it's, a, it's very close uh, to being a completely safe way to interact with an extremely complex VM. Uh, so please have a look if you're interested in that. Uh, internal design of Dino, I'm just going to speed through this really quick. Uh, we have we designed this quite similarly to to an operating system, and so uh, inside of Dino we is, we have this uh, idea of ops, which are uh, equivalent to syscalls. That's how you reach out of the of the VM, uh, and we have something called like file descriptors. Uh, these are called resource IDs to not confuse things. Uh, and processes are essentially equivalent to to web workers in Dino. By the way, we use the standard web worker API that you get in the web browser. Uh, and the way that we organize all of this is that basically the only way to call in and out of the VM is, is using uh, UN8 arrays, uh, array buffers. And you might think that, the, that this sort of serialization is, is quite slow, but we've put a lot of effort into this. And you know, essentially there's, these are zero copy operations. Uh, there's uh, uh, we're, we're essentially point, passing pointers back and forth from, from JavaScript to, to Rust. Uh, and yeah, I, I won't go into any, any more details on that. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dino is at 1.0 um, and the Dino API is uh, stable for the foreseeable future. We are fixing bugs, fixing bugs, and going to be fixing more bugs. Uh, we will be releasing uh, minor releases, 1.x releases, on a monthly cadence, uh, 13th of every month. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of interesting future work, like opcrates, which allows, uh, basically splits up the, the CLI into, into more useful bits. Uh, we are thinking heavily about adding uh, GPU support through, through WebGPU or WebGL APIs to enable machine learning applications. And there's also this uh, feature that people are pretty interested in, which is Dino Compile, which would take uh, some JavaScript and compile it to a binary. Not really. It would package up the JavaScript and it would take a V8 and it would kind of bundle this all up. But at the end of the day, you would get uh, an executable. Uh, so that I think uh, those things would be quite interesting. Uh, please reach out if you uh, want to get involved. Uh, so thank you very much.